Hey guys, I'm DC and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary where all soap lovers are welcome. Whew, it's like a marathon getting all these reviews out. How does Brock TV and Albert Bostic do it on the regular? <laughs> it's a lot. But anyways guys, welcome to my General Hospital Week in Review, the spawn of Faison. Faison. What did I say? Faison. Right? Faison. All right, let's get into this, guys. <laughs> if you guys notice, I have been live tweeting on the soaps this week. Um, and then, of course, I come in the weekend to come to my reviews. I don't watch any other reviews prior to doing mine, so there's no bias in what I say and on my views. So I, I, try to, I try to do this sometimes. I try to, I try to little something, something. You know what I mean? I try to little something, something. But one thing I want to talk about, because you, you, some of you guys may have saw my Steve Burton video where I gave my take on him being fired for the vaccine mandate. Um, what's interesting I thought was that no American soap has covered COVID at all. Like it has been none of their storylines, nothing. And I'm going to be real with you. I think that's actually a good idea that they didn't because so many people are so divided on this issue. I think it's best they don't ever cover it on the soaps. I don't until there's like a consensus to how the public feels about it. Um, I think that's for the best, honestly, everything's for the best. Um, because I think there was a lot of questions to whether or not they would cover it, they wouldn't cover it. The South African soaps have. Uh, I think the British soaps have covered it. Um, but the American soaps have not. And I think that's for the best. <laughs> I really do think that's for the best because so many people are so divided on this issue. You don't want to lose your view. And from a business perspective too, I think it's for the best that they don't cover it, honestly. But I thought that was interesting. Did anybody else ever think that that was interesting and no soap has a COVID storyline? I mean, General Hospital had a quarantine storyline back in the day, like a couple years ago with Rob and Jason, but it wasn't like COVID oriented, if that makes sense. So let's get right into this, guys. A spawn of Faison. Faison. <laughs> Uh, let's go right into it. Let's talk about Chase and BLQ, which is Brooklyn Quartermain. Uh, let's just talk about this for a second, guys. Chase claiming BLQ, Bailey Lois Quartermain. I still don't get why they haven't told Anna and Valentine. I mean, they had a chance to do it right then there at the door. Why not tell them? This is Anna's, uh, what is it, grandnephew. And... I feel like Valentine would help them. So why, I mean, Valentine already knows it's not his daughter. Why not at this point tell him? Plus Peter's in town, we're gonna need all protection security can get. And Anna has her WSB contacts. It just doesn't make sense. Chase being a police officer at the PCPD, he can't, he, he can't really do that. But look at this man getting suspended. Come on now, like what can, what can Chase do? I like Chase, he's a good guy. But what could he really do in a situation? Honestly, though, honestly, in all seriousness, what could Chase really do in a situation like this to really help Brooklyn? Honestly, um, like I said, I just, I just don't get why they haven't done that. It, it, to me, it just makes no sense. Honestly, it, it still doesn't make no sense. But I'm gonna suspend belief. We're watching the soap, guys. You know what I mean? Um, let's talk about Brando and Sasha. They finally have a great storyline. But my thing is, like, how many people in Port Charles have to be named after Sonny and Jason? Is that necessary? Liam, Mike. But, I mean, I, all right, I get it. They're, they're, they're Sonny's family, so I'll let it go. I'm glad that Sonny has another family member, especially after he did Courtney really dirty, um, which he needs to be more of a uh, of an influence in Spencer's life, I would like, and I would appreciate that. Um, without uh, without uh, disrespect to Nicholas, though, because that is his father. So that's, that's the, you know, about, without that part. Um, if you guys noticed, I tweeted, I, I'm going to try to get a picture of my tweet that I tweeted, I think it was like a day or two ago, about the quarter mains. Did you guys notice though that the quarter mains, they barely blinked an eye when it was mentioned that Jason died, besides Monica, of course. Like, Jason is a stranger to the quarter mains, like legit, he's a stranger to them. If you notice, Brooklyn said, oh yeah, I remember Jason in passing, he was so nice in passing in passing like jason is a stranger to these people <laughs> like <laughs> because at first when olivia was just like oh my god sunny and carly they're gonna be devastated at first i was like can you let monica have her moment but then i get but then thinking back to it now like you know i get it why olivia said that because sunny and carly were really more of his family than quarter mains ever were honestly and i think that drew would be a better quarter main than jason ever could be he'll be a better son of monica honestly because Jason didn't give a damn about them. She, he, he really didn't. I mean, he didn't even care to claim to be there for his own kids, which is Jake and Danny. He didn't care about them. So the fact that Liz and 
Sam aren't really mooring Jason. I think it's actually right on brand. They don't need to, and they don't deserve to. I don't think they, they need to, and nor should they mourn Jason at this point. Let Carly mourn him, honestly, at this point. Because Jason has more of a regard. You know how they had more of a regard to tell Michael than they did Jake and Danny? Like, the court man's never brought up, my God, Jake and Danny. Oh my God, who's gonna tell Michael? Michael might as well be Jason's son because listen, the real love of Jason's life is Carly. We all know that. We all know that. Like no matter how much he was in love with Sam, not how much he was loving Elizabeth, it was always going to be Carly. And Jason regarded almost Michael as a son, in a sense, if you notice. Um, Cause this is something I noticed in, in, in real life that whenever a parent is more closer, like especially a father, whenever a father is more closer, let's say the father has multiple children with different women. The woman that he's the more closest with is I notice a child he's also the most closest with too. I've seen happen through the years, right? Um, and so I feel like in some kind of way or capacity that he regards Michael as a son and he's very close with Carly. Makes sense why him and Michael have more of a special bond and connection, of course, through the years and what happened to, um, but do you notice that? And look how he treats, you know, uh, Sam and Elizabeth. It's, it's it's honestly pretty sad. It's pretty shameful, honestly, that he could never think that his kids could come first. So <laughs> let me talk about the bridge scene. Um, the bridge scene, even though I just mentioned that Liz and Sam shouldn't have had to mourn Jason, I do feel like that should have been Carly, Liz, and Sam. That would have made more sense. Britt just got to meeting Jason, but I get it, like, cause, and this is what I think here, guys. I honestly think if Steve Burton wasn't leaving the show, they would have explored the Sunny Carly Love Triangle. That would have been more soapier than being with Nina. Think about it. Cause there's so much history with those three and they've been there before back in the 90s. So to revisit this again, I would have, I personally would have loved it. I would have loved it, honestly. I, I honestly would have loved it. But because Steve Burton was leaving, they're gonna explore it from the Nina angle instead, which I'm like, all right, I get it. You know, that's what they gotta do, you know? And to me, I just feel like with uh, Brit, Brit should have mourned alone. She shouldn't have been with Carly. She should have mourned alone, honestly. It just, it was kind of weird. But what I'm thinking is here, is this an opportunity now for Carly to have a gal pal? That's not her business associate. That's right, Olivia Quarterman, I'm looking at you. <laughs> she hasn't had a gal pal since Lulu, but that was back before Lulu met Dante. Once I think Dante did something to Michael, and then that's when Carly was like, okay, you're gonna cut off too. And then so her and Lulu weren't speaking anymore at that point in time. And her and Lulu were kind of talking through the years, but they weren't as close as they used to be. So I would like Carly to finally have a gal pal because she's like alienated everybody in Port Charles, it feels like it. It feels like her daughter is becoming her gal pal. Like she doesn't have no friends that no 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 friends that are that are women. You know what I mean? That actually like her and can stand her. So, but did you notice they mentioned Robin's name? You see, Robin's GH Legacy, guys. Hey, she, she GH Legacy. If you guys haven't checked out my top seven soap opera characters of all time, I'm gonna post that link in there. Um, Robin is GH Legacy, man. She is GH Legacy, man. That's why they had to mention Robin's name. They, they, they had to, they had to mention Robin's name, guys. But I wanna get back to the morning of Jason and Sam moving on. Um, I'm kind of happy that Sam moved on. She deserves it. She deserves to be with someone who's actually gonna put her first for once. Like, can you can you imagine you 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 have a child with someone you are married to them, and then some other person is coming first in your marriage all the time? That would get on my nerves. That would really get on my nerves. And I feel like Dante is able to communicate more about his feelings. I like him better for Sam. I really do. At first, the whole Sante thing, I wasn't sure about them. And they were falling. It wasn't really clicking with me, but now I'm actually really happy for Sam. She deserves to move on. She really deserves to move on because those women, like, they're never going to be first in Jason's life. And I would prefer that. And Britt dodged a bullet because Carly's always going to come first. Her kids are always going to come first, too, over Jason's own kids. That's just... That's why the quarterman's didn't blink an eye when Jason died. That, that man is a stranger to them. He is a stranger to them. And to me, even me as a viewer watching their hospital, every time I see the Jason interact with the quartermains, it's like he is a stranger to them. And in fact, when I first started watching GH in 06, I remember somebody filled me in because uh, we have some family friends that are longtime viewers of GH. And they're like, oh yeah, that's Jason's family. And I was like, really? I was like, I never even seen him interact on screen or nothing. And it wasn't like how on Guiding Light where Gus Itoro was a Spalding, but you saw him interact with the Spaldings in some type of capacity. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I, 
it never translated with Jason the Quartermans. It really, it really didn't. It really didn't translate with Jason the Quartermans. It really did not um, at all. And you know what's interesting is that Sonny, after he found out the news that Jason died, he just went right back to chopping the onions. I tweeted that the other day. He just went right back to chopping the onions because when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. He knows what time it is. Sonny knows what time it is. Sonny was just sitting there chopping the onions and Carly was outside like, <sighs> and you know, Sonny was just like looking at her from the window, so chopping the onions. <laughs> Because Sonny, I think he, well, he's in, he's directly in the life, so he's always accepted what type of life they lead. Carly, not so much. And maybe it's because Carly is not directly in that life. But, I mean, what do you think was going to happen? And then when Carly was like, oh, Brent, this is on you. Oh, no, it's not the fact that he's a mobster and he was a dangerous lifestyle. No, that has nothing to do with it either, right? <laughs> no, we're just going to blame Brent, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. You know, so to me, it's just like, it, it, it makes no sense, honestly. But I get that was grief talking. Carly wanted someone to blame, as usual. But when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You know what I'm saying? Like, you lived a dangerous life. What do you think was going to happen to Jason? In fact, every day he steps out, Side the, the, that door. Don't expect him to come back. I wouldn't expect him to come back, or Sonny either, for that matter. But what's weird is that everyone's like, "Yeah, there's no way Jason could have made it." But then everyone keeps bringing up the point that Sonny made it. Yeah, but there's no way he could have made it. But there was also no way Sonny could have made it. But I get this. Is, this is for storyline sakes. I get it. But if I lived in the town like Port Charles and someone close to me died, I would have high hopes that they're still alive. I'll contact Anna of the WSB and see what's up. <laughs> I'll see what's up. You know what I mean? That's what I would do. And this little tidbit I love, I had no idea Scott Baldwin was Jason's guardian at one point in time. I was like, I was like, thank you, GH, for a little tidbit they shared at the quarter main dinner. I was like, I, I can really appreciate that. I can really appreciate that. I was really happy. Um, one thing I noticed I want to bring up is that when Sonny was at the hospital, Sasha, Sasha, I said Sasha, Sasha, Sasha and Brando was that he mentioned how like uh, Jocelyn's like a daughter to him. I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't be surprised in the next few years if they do a history rewrite where, where uh, Sonny is uh, Jocelyn's biological father and Jax isn't. Because Jax's character is so irrelevant on GH. And it's nothing to do with the actor Ingo. It's nothing to do with him with that Vax Manny storyline. But Jax's character is so irrelevant. Jason's character does, does have more impact than leaving the canvas, you notice. But Jax's character is so irrelevant. I don't know, you know, just besides Jocelyn, I'm like, what are the ties you have to Canvas? He's like, he's become so irrelevant. So I wouldn't be surprised if the writers decided to do that one day. But Sonny already has 10,000 kids, so I don't know, I think we're all good on that. Let's talk about the cast signs real quick before I forget about them. Um, I really love this little reunion the cast signs have. Um, I'm loving new, new, uh, new, new, uh, new Nicholas. I'm loving new Nicholas. Um, but like I said before, and I said in the last huge review video, um, I don't know why Sean is trying to be all high and mighty with Nicholas. Like, he's so much better. You're gonna, you shot an innocent woman. You shot an innocent woman. You shoot people every day that when you were working for Sonny. Like, miss me with this, man. Miss me with it. Miss me with it. Just miss me with it. Miss me with it. You see, you shoot at me. Miss me with it. You know what I'm saying? Miss me with it. <laughs> you shoot people every day for a living. When you were working for Sonny, that is. And granted, they were innocent people. They were in the same lifestyle you guys are living, the mob life. But, um,. Don't try to act so high and mighty, and I, you know, just don't, just don't. Like every time I look at Nicholas, like he's so mad in the corner, and I'm just like, man, if you don't, if you don't get out of here, man. If you don't get out of here. <laughs> you don't, you better stop. You, you, you gotta get out of here, man. You were his hit man at one point in time. You don't get no sympathy from me. Not from the sanctuary, that is. No, you don't get no, san no sympathy from the sanctuary. None, none at all. And I want to just uh, check back to Drew Kane. He just got, Cameron Matheson, man. Let me tell. I know he was gonna kill it on GH. Can we just say that he is our Drew Kane, ladies and gentlemen? He, I knew he was gonna kill it when he came to GH. I was honestly shocked they didn't try to snatch him up years earlier. This guy was a good actor. He was on All My Children. He, he, and it's weird because the character of Ryan Lavery really didn't have no ties to Pine Valley that were like besides his own kids. But it was good. Like, Cameron Matheson's a good actor. It's a good actor right there. And I know they're doing a little chemistry test, seeing who they're gonna put him with. I don't mind if they put him with Carly, or if they put him with um, Maxi. You know what I'm saying? I would say Sam, but she's with Dante right now. Um, who's a good person? Brit. I'll be here for it. I, I totally be here for it, honestly. And let's talk about Peter. Peter, good old Peter, the spawn of Faison. Faison. Let's talk about Peter. 
I know a lot of people don't like Peter, but I actually do like Peter. I, do, I love the way he talks. You know, Maxie, my child, you haven't told Carly, have you, Nina? I just love it. I, I, I love it. I don't know what to do. Guys, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, 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 I'm here for Peter. But the problem is I feel like Wes Ramsey is on contract. And you can only make someone a villain. Usually when a villain is so disastrous like this, there would be like a serial killer, like a murder mystery. Like they would be killed off and there would be some murder mystery. But the problem is that Peter is such a good villain. What's going to happen to Wes Ramsey paying Peter? Because at some point in time, they're going to have to redeem his character or kill Peter off and then bring back Peter's long lost twin, who's a totally different person. So when is it going to work? You ever notice that? It's always gonna work. Um, Cause soap villains don't last long. You can't have a, someone on the, the, the cannabis for so long they'd be a villain. That's why with Obrecht, they had to redeem her character and make her softer over time in order for her to survive as a character on cams for the long run. Cause that's what you know is the villains when they come on, they have like a little arc and they're gone. Um, which actually, no, let me take that back. Cause they had Stefano Demir on days. They managed to make that work. So let me, I think I should take that back. I think I should take that back. I take it back then. I take it back, guys. I take it back. So, but I also want to say that I wouldn't be surprised if years from now that Maxie's kids go missing and that Faison is behind it. I feel that just comes with the territory with siring the grandchildren of Faison. It just it just comes with the territory, guys. It really comes with the territory. Um, now, I got a feeling Peter is going to use his leverage over Nina again. And Nina's gonna be in his back pocket again. And Nina, at this point, just tell Carly, like, just tell, let them know so he doesn't have the leverage over you. Like, there's nothing worse she can do to you at this point. Michael's already suing you from Lantano County, which I don't really see what Nina did could be constituted legally in court. Morally, yes, but legally, I'm not sure. And you guys know this is a Cena channel, right? We, we, we sponsor a Cena out of way. We are a Cena channel. Because of this, he has been submitted for a psychiatric evaluation. Stay tuned. And you know, you know why the reason why I love Sonny Nina is because Nina brings out a softer side in Sonny. Carly couldn't do that. Carly just enabled him in this mob lifestyle, but Nina was like, I challenge you to be a better man. She did, she challenged him to be a better man. And honestly, cause I've gotten tired of Sonny's If you guys notice, I'm not really a Sonny fan. I, I, I like the way he was as a character. He's too arrogant. I'm not, I was never feeling him. But she made him softer. Now I enjoy Sonny better. I enjoy him a lot more better. I really do. He's still that mobster with a little bit of a hard goal. Not that he's a mobster, he gotta be tough. I get it. But, if you're gonna be out for 30 years, I wanna see something softer, Sonny, you know? And she made him that. She made him a softer character. So for that, I'm very, I'm, I'm very grateful to Nina for that. I'm very grateful to her for that. But guys, that is my general hospital week in review, the spawn of Faison. Faison. So any comments you guys have, just put them down in the comments below. Um, I'm trying to think, did I, did I cover everybody? Did I? You see, this video is like almost 20 minutes long. I couldn't do that wine Airbnb. I, I, just, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it, guys. I, I, I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. But you know what, I, I tweeted something the other day where I was like, you know, which GH family would you want to be a part of? I'm gonna do more polls on my Twitter page. But honestly, if I if, if I had to pick a family GH I'd want to be a part of, it would be the Quartermaids. I'd want to be the long lost son of Justice Ward, and then I would come back in some like ELQ takeover, and then they'd be like, wait a minute, you know, there's one more person that has ELQ stock. And they're like, who is it? All the court maids are accounted for, even Tracy, blah, 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 we called her. And they're like, no, it's me. And they're like, you, who are you? Because you're not black, there's not a lot of black court maids by Justice Ward in the, in the wards. It's like, who are you? You're a court maid? I was like, yeah, I'm the long son of justice. And then boom, I'm like, I own ELQ. <laughs> come on, that'd be a good storyline, right? And you come in, I'll be working with, uh, what is it, uh, Austin and, and Valentin, we take down ELQ. And, but then I have to have a reason. What would, what would the, the son of Justice Ward's reason be to take down the ELQs? Cause Edward embraced the wards. He embraced Bradley Ward and Justice. So I have to have a good reason guys. What would be my reason? If I was a long lost son of Justice Ward, what would be my reason for him to take over ELQ? Hmm. What would be my reason? I don't know. I have to have a good reason. I didn't even think about that. See, this is why I can't be a soap writer. I didn't even think it all the way through, guys. <laughs> but anyways, guys, that's my General Hospital Week in Review. This has been Soap Sanctuary. I'm out. This has been Soap Sanctuary.